This video will discuss the features and show how to operate the HAL Technology HFX205 handheld formaldehyde meter. When you receive the meter, it typically comes in this package. And let's open the package. In the main compartment, we see the handheld set and the optional humidity temperature probe. In the accessory compartment, we have the universal adapter, which can be used to charge the battery or for continuous operation of the meter. It supplies 100 to 240 volts and comes with the appropriate electrical connection for your locale, either US or European plug. That plug can be adapted to any other plug since it's a universal adapter. Also in the accessory compartment is the USB cable, which is used to download data to the computer and the CD can we and the CD which has the software to install on the computer in order to download the data we also have a calibration certificate in the accessory compartment let's put all those items back together close up the accessory compartment the unit is handheld unique in the sense that it's also easy to use and has an internal pump. Most competitors have diffusion type products. Because of the internal pump in this unit, one can attach a tubing and sample under cabinets or other hard to reach places. This model is the HFX205. Thousands of these units have been sold since its introduction in 2010 and it is CE certified. It replaces the HFX-105. The power and data ports on the, on the HFX-205 were on the bottom on the HFX-105. The HFX-205 also allows temperature compensated readings. It has a newer, more stable sensor with low offset and 0.01 ppm sensitivity. It also has a doubled battery lifetime of greater than 7 hours and has the option for ports for analog output. Now let's look at the unit, the handheld set itself. On the front we have the keypad and the display. The keypad we have the power button, the two cursor keys up and down, the back button, the run stop button, and the enter button. On the side we have an LED to display the power status and charging status. We have the power connector and we have the USB connector for data download. On the top of the unit, we have the connector for the temperature humidity sensor and we have the tubing connector or the sample port. On the back of the unit, we have the calibration sticker and the battery compartment. Any service needs or the typically recommended yearly calibration can be performed by contacting HAL Technology based on the information on the sticker. Now let's actually get ready to operate the unit. To operate the unit, we need to, turn, uh, we need to remove the cap, and then we need to turn on the power. Hold the power button until we hear a beep, and then release. The unit has a one minute warm up period to stabilize the electronics for reliable readings. During this time, other instrument settings can be checked on the other screens. The optional temperature humidity probe can also be installed at this time. The temperature humidity probe has a notch that needs to be aligned with the notch on the connector. And once located, just grab on the top and press down onto the unit. Do not rotate, just simply press down. To release this, the probe, grab the knurled unit and pull up. And again, to push down, align the notch and press down. Okay, and we see we have two more seconds left for our electronics warm up. Okay. Now, we will actually start acquiring data. 
The unit is already ready to acquire data. All we need to do is press run. We hear the pump turn on and we're acquiring data. In this case we're sampling from clean air so we have 0 ppm. There's a remote chance we may see 0.01 ppm randomly show up but at this time it will be 0. In order to store a value while we're running we can press the enter button. One data point has been stored in the memory of the unit. For demonstration purposes we will store two more data points and then we can actually stop running the pump. One last detail on the main screen is we can change the units displayed from ppm to milligrams per cubic meter by pressing the back button and pressing the button again changes it back to ppm. Okay, now moving on to the next screen if we go up we enter the browsing screen to, well, to en enter the screen we actually need to press the enter button and we display our previously acquired data. In this case we have three, we're seeing the third of three data points. If we scroll down we see the second of three data points and we see as the only difference today will be a change of timestamp since our readings are all zero. And we see the first. So moving back up to the second, when you're on the browsing screen you can also delete data points if necessary by pressing the enter button. You come up with the delete screen. If you did not want to delete that entry, press the back button. Going back to the deletion option, we can press either one or all of the entries by changing the choice with the cursor. Either cursor will make the change. In this case let's delete one entry, the second out of three entries we will now have two entries left over. And if we repeat the process once more, we can actually delete the remaining entries. By pressing all, waiting a second or two for it to delete all the values. Now we are done with the browsing screen, and we can go back. The next screen we can look at is the setting screen. On the setting screen, we press enter to actually place the cursor onto the screen. We can move between parameters by using the cursor keys and we can scroll to any parameter desired. To change a parameter, we press the enter key and we can change the value. And Once you've set the value, you press enter to store that value. And We can move along the screen to any value desired and make said change. The alarm setting is the ppm value at which an audible alarm will occur. If that value is zero, no alarm will occur. In this case, the, set, the unit, the set, will alarm at 0.3 ppm. Again, one can enter and make changes as necessary. Moving to the save option, it, it comes, it's currently set in the manual option. If we'd like to change that, we can change it to an automatic option. If we change that to one, it will be one minute between recordings, automatic recordings. We can change that to two all the way up through nine. So we can keep scrolling up till nine. At this time, let's change it to one minute per recording. During the automatic recording mode, we can still press the enter button to take other data points at other times. Okay, now we're done with the setting screen and we press back to leave the, to get the cursor off of the screen and we can move on to the calibration screen. The calibration screen shows the factory settings in this case and the screen has been designed for user calibration. So, following the instructions in the manual, assuming I actually took a, calibrated, uh, a calibration point and uh, I want to change, say, the value of my upper entry, 
I can choose that, say it was actually 1.2 ppm. I can change that setting. I would obviously have had a reading doing this during this process. And I can change that setting. If I want to go back to the factory default settings, I can actually choose reset. And doing so, we see that we went back to 1.0 ppm. That is all there is for the calibration screen. And that completes the menu options in the unit. We can turn the unit back on and continuously run. And at this time, again, point out that the, um, the main screen dims when we're actually operating the unit to save battery power because you can operate for long periods of time. So you wouldn't want the backlight on during a long continuous run. Um, other items to mention are maintenance of the unit. When the unit is stored, the red cap should be placed over the sensing port to keep the sensor isolated from the environment. You don't want air flowing through and potentially contaminating the sensor when it's not in operation. Also, after high exposure, the unit should be run in a clean environment, whether it's a clean office or outside in the clean air, so that the unit's reading goes to near zero before shutting the unit off. That way there's no excess formaldehyde stored within the sensor during storage. And again, replace the cap once it's finished. Um, once you've finished acquiring your data again, we press the run stop key. And if we move up to the browsing screen, we see we took one data point. We ran for about one minute and we took one data point. And again, if we had run for five minutes, we would have five data points. And the same deletion, et cetera, can be done. And that is the operation of the unit. Thank you for using the HAL technology HFX205 handheld formaldehyde meter. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact HAL Technology.